ACM Wealth Management. Vancouver Lawyers, Dumoulin Boscovich. Vancouver Courier Newspaper. David and Mark Goodman. Kathleen Bartels is the director of the Vancouver Art Gallery, and she is our guest. We're discussing uh, what has turned out to be a, a bit of a, a commercial, uh, a controversial uh, <laughs> uh, idea, and a bit of a Donnybrook in, in the arts community and, and other communities, the financial community. Uh, you want to move. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be cheap. Uh, look, one of the things you've said, and, and the city has set aside this, this mm -hmm. property yes. uh, for a, an art center with mm -hmm. possibly many activities. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the old bus station, uh, yes. Laurel Park. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one of the things that you've said on your website is only three percent of your mm -hmm. of your uh, collection, collection yes. which which mm -hmm. uh, which I know you've you've expanded mm -hmm. considerably mm -hmm. since you've been there. Mm -hmm. Only three percent of your collection mm -hmm. is shown, but but in fairness, Kathleen, that's true of any gallery, is not? I, I mean, the National, uh, the Tate, most well, most. People's collections are in the basement, aren't they? Um, I wouldn't say that. Um, I think so much of the expansion that you've seen in art museums in the last ten years has really been about bringing those works out of the basement and showing them more. Yes. Um, you can't ever show everything that you have, um, but I think what's what's wonderful and unique about Vancouver, Vancouver is known throughout the world because of its international artists and our artists that live and work here, yes. that have great reputations, the Jeff Walls, the Stan Douglas, the Rodney Graham. People come to Vancouver, they want to see the work of those art. Ken Lum, we're fortunate to have a big Ken Lum show right now. I, I have two questions about yes. that. Uh, yeah. but, and so, but that work isn't up all the time. Yes. Um, so people come here and expect to see that work. They travel from Germany, from Paris, from um, other parts of North America and Canada to to come and see that work and we can't always have it up because you know we have people have visitors have an expectation they're going to see you know temporary exhibitions and so do our so do, do people in our local community they want to see the best historical work that we can show um, what's the newest and latest trend in, in art so we we try to do all those things but we're in a very confined facility how long is the Ken Lama exhibit it is up through the summer yeah so yeah. you have so you have I, some time I have a crude question why why, why, why would we, when well, we have limited space, mm -hmm. why would we give anybody, including Ken Lum, a, a six-month run? Well, he's why one not of, three months? He's one of our most important artists, and it's critical that people here understand his practice. He hasn't had a major exhibition in Vancouver in over 20 years, but he has shown in all the great cities in Europe, uh, but not here. So it's our responsibility to support and encourage uh, the artists that are known throughout the world that live and work here. I have a list yes. of artists that you show, and you've named them, that mm -hmm. you show quite often. Yes. Jeff Wall, Scott McFarlane, Rebecca Bellmer, Fred Herzog, mm -hmm. Paul Wong, and so on, Ken yeah. Lum. And those are people, if anybody pays the slightest attention to art, we know the names, mm -hmm. especially Jeff Wall, Ken mm -hmm. Lum, show up regularly, mm -hmm. Paul Wong over the years. Yes. But I also have a list of people that have been, uh, people have sort of fed to me, and these are artists who are shown all over the world, mm -hmm. and they live and work in Vancouver, but mm. they've never appeared at the art gallery. Oh, okay. Is there a fiduciary responsibility uh, on, uh, on the art gallery to to show local artists as much as possible? A, a financial responsibility, you mean a fiduciary? Yeah, or? is, is well, it written into the the Constitution or the bylaws? No, not at all. Um, but I think, you know, again, we're a confined Building yes. and we can and we can't be all things to all people. I yes. think we we try to do the best that we can to reflect the art making in this community, um, whether it's in big group show, shows like We Vancouver, showing 45 artists and architects and designers, 
uh, and community organizations in Vancouver. Uh, we've done a big exhibition called How Soon Is Now? Contemporary Art From Here, where we had 40-some you know, artists uh, throughout BC that we presented. So we do make a real attempt to try to be more inclusive, um, but at the same time, we can't show everybody at the art gallery. I Googled three names. Yes. Uh, you tell me. Uh, you must know these names. I'm yes. sure you know your art much better than I do. Um, Parviz Tenovoli. Uh, Austria, Italy, Germany, U.S., Korea, mm -hmm. British Museum, MoMA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's, he's shown in what all of What is his name? His name is Parviz Tenovoli. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Bonifacio. Uh, he's at the Bogie, he's at the Heffel mm -hmm, here mm -hmm. in Vancouver. Yes. He's exhibited in Cologne, Seattle, Calgary, Toronto, Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, Leslie Poole, yeah. uh, over 100 Leslie. solo exhibits. Uh -huh. Yes. You're showing Leslie? No, I know her work. I oh, know okay. his work. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are just examples yes. of people you know, mm -hmm. that, that have been presented to me, and people say, well, why don't they show more? Canadian artists. Why Vancouver? Because mm -hmm. you you said a few mm -hmm. moments ago, people come from all over the world to mm -hmm. see Vancouver yes. artists. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Why don't we show more of them? I think we do our best. We show okay. remarkable. A majority of the art that we show is based on Vancouver in this place, from emerging artists to the most respected artists. And I think we we do the best we can in our in our facility. Is it? Is and it, I think people are very complimentary of the range and breadth of work that we show uh, of artists from this place. And again, it's not just visual artists. We really try to incorporate architects, designers. You show, um, you show a lot of uh, installation and photo artists. Um, I'd say we, not necessarily, I mean, well, certainly Vancouver is known for its photo-based art, yes. right? So and it's, it's a very important part of our program, of course, but I don't think it's exclusive. Is there? No, I didn't say it was yeah. exclusive, mm -hmm. but you show a lot of it. I, 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 does the Vancouver Art Gallery, and I, I have no idea, mm -hmm. I'm just asking, yeah. does the Vancouver Art Gallery have a sort of uh, negative feeling about what might be called old-fashioned oil on canvas? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, yeah. if you look at some of the shows that we've done more recently, we did the, the Modern Woman from beautiful drawings right. from the Musée d'Orsay in Paris. We right. did the Rijksmuseum exhibition, right. which was tremendously uh, well-received. Um, so, so Kathleen, yes. let's, let's, let's continue mm -hmm. with this conversation mm -hmm. with content, because yes. as we say in TV, mm -hmm. content is king. Mm -hmm. So let's say you 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 your dream comes true mm -hmm. and you get that three hundred fifty mm -hmm. million or whatever it takes mm -hmm. to to build mm -hmm. at Canby in Georgia. Yes. Uh, what is your strategy for acquisitions? What will you use for money mm -hmm. if you if you spend three hundred fifty on building the box, building yes. the environment? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's yeah. your what's well, your acquisitions you know, plan? And well, I know you've been good at acquisitions. Yeah, we have yeah. actually in the last ten years our. Uh, collection has grown from 6,000 to over 10,000 works, right. which is really exciting. Yep. But like most institutions, we rely very heavily on donations. Yes. Donations from collectors and artists, um, and so that's a, an important element. Uh, we have a very small acquisition fund, um, but we use it uh, very strategically and, and every year put together. Well, what is small? What do you mean? So, uh, well, it's about eight eight million dollar acquisition yeah. fund, yes. uh, and then we draw four percent down from that and sure. we use that. But also, we've been able to uh, establish four new um, acquisition endowment funds uh -huh. in the last five years. So, a Michael Audain emerging. Uh, Artist Acquisition Fund, uh, the Gene McMillan Southern Art Acquisition Fund, the Major Purchase Fund, right. the Eliza Wynn Estate Fund. So we've been very strategic in, in encouraging people to establish funds for acquisition. And do your curators, do you and your curators have a sort of eyeball on the kinds of things you hope will come on market? Uh, we're always looking. We're always looking. Uh, at auctions, we're always meeting with artists. We we very strategically work work with collectors all over the country and in the United States. Yes. Um, working with them and what work they're buying that would relate to our collection. Would they be interested in gifting their collection? We've been very successful. Several years ago, we acquired a major collect collection uh, of internationally photo-based work from yes. Allison and Alan Schwartz. Claudia Beck and Andrew Gruff gave us a wonderful collection. A photography several years ago. So we've been very strategic and successful on that front, but it's never ending. We always are pushing. In, ter in terms of acquisitions yes. and in terms of your collection, mm -hmm. which is stored in the basement, why not store it in Burnaby 
Why, well, why not store somewhere else? Yeah, well, first of all, climate control and security are right. critically important. Right. So you have to find a climate controlled building that can accommodate. Okay. And the collection is something we work with on a regular basis. There's research, there's photography, there's uh, you know, conservation. So you yes. have to have access on a regular basis. So right. I think that's challenging. Um, to take a collection and, and put it somewhere out in the yeah. in, in another location, because we work with it on a regular basis, and right now we have a large permanent collection exhibition up. The last thing I'll throw at you yes. about, about mm -hmm. collections, because we're almost out of yes. time, is uh, these comments from, you know, Bing Tom, the local architect. Mm -hmm. He says, "Look, you folks are sort of on an ego trip, and you want to do a Bilbao, and you, you know, and that was a, an obscure town in in northern mm -hmm. Spain. So people mm -hmm. ran to see this Frank Gehry mm -hmm. thing, which was an explosion of metal and so on. So it looked it was kind of fascinating. Uh, but his buddy, Bing Tom's buddy, Chris Wooten, who mm -hmm. really built uh, the cult for us, uh, he, he's been." Uh, he's been almost searing in his comment, and he says, "Look," and he was, and he was the uh, associate director yes, of the he gallery. Yes, he worked for me. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. he says the collection is mediocre. I think that's really unfortunate. Yes. Um, when you look at the collection and you look up at how we've built it over the years, and the collectors and artists that we've relied on, yes, internationally known collectors, internationally known artists, um, I would disagree strongly with that comment. Uh, okay, last question. Yes. What will you do, what will we do, what will the city do mm -hmm. with the courthouse if in fact you move? Well, you know, this, that's really the, the city's decision along with the province who owns the building and the land. Um, I, think, think? I think everyone's very committed to having it stay in the cultural realm. Yes. And there's so much cultural infrastructure need in the city from the Vancouver Museum to the uh, UBC and, and the Museum of Anthropology and the Belkin wanting to expand an Asia Pacific Cultural Center. So I think there's a lot of possibilities. Kathleen, have you have you had the experience, fortunate or unfortunate, mm -hmm. in the last several months mm -hmm. that much of this fight has become personal? Oh, you know, I never take anything personal. You can't in my bit. I, you know, I think we hear from a lot of people in the community, and um, you know, certainly. Um, I try to listen very carefully to what people are saying, but you know, people you throw, just kind of yeah. let it roll off your back and you move on. People throw um, out some stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. They say this this group is bunkered, they're elitist, uh, they don't want to talk to anybody. Well, I think they, if you look yeah. at, at the program, yeah. our family fuse, our fuse, the number yes. of school children, how much the gallery has grown. Our membership, when I came to the gallery, was 5,000. It's close to 50,000. That speaks to community support, um, and so that's what I look to. I find my excitement in, in the community we serve and also the artists that we work with. Kathleen, great. Thanks so much for being with Thank us. Thank you. And Thank we'll, you very much, we'll look, David. We'll look forward to seeing how this uh, rolls out Thank in the you. coming months. All right, uh, next week, Susan and Goliath. Susan Hayes, as you know, ran a little maternity clothing store on Canby Street. Uh, they tore up the street. They said they weren't going to, but they tore up the street and she ended up suing the Canada line, and uh, she won $600,000. Guess what? Last week, this decision was reversed. What are they gonna do? Take the money away? This is a Susan and Goliath story. She's one of my heroes, and you'll meet her next week. Thanks so much for being with us.